Have you ever wondered how a seemingly indestructible fortress of military power could crumble in a short span of only six weeks? This campaign forever altered the landscape of modern history. It began on the 10th of May, 1940, a day that marked the commencement of the German Blitzkrieg, a relentless, fast-paced, and brutally efficient military assault. This was no ordinary campaign. It was a storm of steel and fire that rained upon France, a nation known for its formidable defenses and battle-hardened troops. Yet, within weeks, France surrendered. It was a pivotal, heart-wrenching moment, a turning point that sent shockwaves throughout the Allied world. The seemingly unshakable French defenses had been rendered futile against the brutality of the German forces. But how was this possible? What series of events led to this unforeseen downfall? To truly understand how the balance of power shifted during the Second World War, we need to go back in time to World War I. Back then, Germany, led by Kaiser Wilhelm II, wanted to swiftly conquer France, but things didn't go as planned. In World War I, France was a tough opponent. With the help of its allies, France used a complex system of forts and trenches known as the Western Front to hold off the German attacks. Even though the French army lost over 1.4 million soldiers, they were able to keep Germany at bay, blocking their attempts to quickly take over. This standstill went on until the end of the war in 1918. France's resistance not only showed the strength of their military, but also demonstrated the immense hurdles Germany had to overcome to defeat them. This part of history is starkly different from what had happened just 20 years later. It sets the stage for a tale of changing strategies, modern warfare, and a turn of events no one saw coming. In the wake of World War II, the French army aimed at repeating the same successful strategy, thus building the famous Maginot Line. This line was a massive wall of defenses stretching over 280 miles, fully loaded with weapons and carefully built. France finished making it by 1938. It was meant to keep Germany out, just like the old style trench warfare did in World War I. France had a strong belief in the line. They thought it would protect them against any German attacks. Unfortunately, this trust was a major downfall for France. Germany had learned from their past and came up with a new fighting method known as the Blitzkrieg. They attacked the weak parts of the French defenses, especially through the Ardennes forest, an area that France didn't guard heavily because they thought it was too tough for an army to pass through. The Maginot Line, while impressive, showed that France was stuck in old ways of thinking about war. They didn't realize that the strategies had changed. Their belief in the line's strength made them feel safe, but it left them unready for the fast and flexible tactics of the Blitzkrieg. As we go forward, we'll see how this false sense of safety sped up France's defeat in 1940. Let's look at Germany's new approach to warfare post-World War I. What did they do differently that allowed them to pull off such a swift victory over France? Germany, having been stung by defeat in the First World War, wasn't going to repeat the same mistakes. They traded their large army concept for a more focused, small army model. The idea was to use fewer but better equipped and highly trained soldiers, capable of delivering rapid, hard-hitting attacks. This fresh strategy, which became the backbone of the Blitzkrieg, allowed for faster movement and greater flexibility on the battlefield. To conceal the movement of these troops, the German army used decoyed cardboard tanks as an important tactic. In a master stroke of deception, the Germans fooled their adversaries. These Faux tanks appeared real from a distance and through reconnaissance photos, thereby misleading the enemy about the actual strength and position of the German forces. Germany's tactical shift proved highly effective against France's defenses. The smaller, nimble German forces could penetrate weak points in the French line with lightning speed, bypassing the robust but inflexible Maginot Line. In addition to highly mobile units in deception, the Blitzkrieg was also an orchestra of coordinated air and ground assaults. The Luftwaffe, the German Air Force, played a vital role. They'd strike first, targeting communication lines and airfields, essentially blinding and muting the enemy. 
This left the adversary in chaos, unable to respond effectively to the subsequent ground attacks. The surrender of France on June the 22nd, 1940 was the grim aftermath of the destructive Blitzkrieg strategy. In a whirlwind span of just over a month, the German forces had successfully subdued France, leaving it battered and reeling. The French military, once a global titan of formidable strength, found itself swept aside by this revolutionary war conduct. Outmaneuvered and outmatched, they were ill-prepared for such swift and brutal tactics. The unanticipated capitulation of France wasn't just a blow to its national pride, it was a tremor that shook the global community. As the dust settled on the battlefields of France, the true cost of the Blitzkrieg or Lightning War began to surface. The lightning fast German attack resulted in a devastating toll on human life and society. The sheer numbers alone are staggering, nearly 360,000 casualties, including 90,000 killed on the French side. These statistics, while chilling, only scratch the surface of the Blitzkrieg's profound impact. The societal aftermath was no less distressing. In a short span, France was turned upside down, cities were bombed out, infrastructure was destroyed, and a sense of fear and uncertainty spread across the nation. Every French citizen, from soldiers on the front lines to families waiting at home, was psychologically scarred by the rapid defeat and its horrific aftermath. The country's once vibrant spirit was tarnished, its moral crushed under the weight of the unexpected defeat. The physical devastation that France suffered was far-reaching, but arguably, the psychological impact was even more severe. French society was permeated by a profound sense of loss and despair that extended far beyond the immediate fatalities and physical destruction. The citizens' faith in their nation's defenses and the might of their revered army was brutally shattered. This bitter reality was hammered home even further with a humiliating incident at Compagne. The signing of the armistice in the same railway carriage where Germany had conceded defeat in World War I was a cruel twist of irony. It was a chilling reminder of their former glory, intensifying the humiliation and highlighting just how far France had fallen. Despite this everlasting war and its grave consequences, one cannot help but wonder why was France so important to Germany to begin with. There are several key factors at play. Firstly, the geographic aspect can't be ignored. By conquering France, Germany gained a significant advantage. The control of France's borders provided a strategic cushion against the Allied forces and created a gateway for further expansion. The geographic benefit was more than just protection. France, with its vast coastline and proximity to Britain, was a strategic gold mine for Germany. With France under its control, Germany could now exert more pressure on Britain a key adversary, furthering the reach of its blitzkrieg warfare. Beyond the geography, there was the symbolism of France's defeat. France was a beacon of democracy and cultural prestige. A superpower with a potent military, its fall dramatically altered the balance of power in Europe, sending shockwaves across the globe. The capitulation of France, a bastion of liberty and a symbol of resistance against German aggression in the First World War, was a powerful, psychological blow to the Allied morale. Moreover, the capture of Paris, the City of Light, served as a particular humiliation to the French and a psychological boost for Germany. This was not merely a military conquest but also a symbolic victory that boosted German morale and demoralized the Allies. France was no mere prize. Its fall was a testament to the prowess of the German military machine and a significant stepping stone in Hitler's ambitious plan for European domination. Moving on, we will now uncover an intriguing subplot, the Ford Motor Company's indirect role in the Blitzkrieg. While it might seem incongruous to link the American automotive giant with Germany's military campaign in France, the interconnectedness of global economics, even during times of war, makes for some unexpected connections. The story begins in the early 1930s when Ford opened a production plant in Germany, becoming a major player in the German auto industry. It's reported that by 1940, almost half of the military vehicles used by the German forces were produced by Ford's German subsidiary. Therefore, while inadvertently, 
the company's industrial prowess indirectly bolstered Germany's lightning warfare. This isn't to suggest that Ford knowingly or willingly aided the German war effort. Like many international businesses operating in Germany at the time, Ford was subject to state control and direction as the Nazi regime consolidated power. Ford's German operations, like many others, were essentially commandeered to contribute to the German war machine. This role of Ford in Blitzkrieg exemplifies international business and the tangled web of global economics. Even as nations clashed on the battlefield, their economics remained interconnected in surprising ways. The story of Ford and the Blitzkrieg highlights that the thread of commerce and conflict are often tightly woven together, producing unforeseen consequences and alliances in the theater of war. As the German Blitzkrieg crumpled France, we're left pondering the lessons of history, the strategic missteps, the cunning tactics, the unexpected alliances, and the devastating consequences. It compels us to ask the question, in the grand scheme of global conflicts, how are we ensuring that the chess moves of today don't echo the strategic mistakes of the past? Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.